What is going on guys? Ryan from Living Salty here and today I'm going to be going over some of the stuff I use when I'm inshore fishing here in South Florida. If you guys are not following me on my Instagram account already, I'll put it on the screen right here. It's uh, living underscore salty with two Y's. Um, make sure you guys go check me out there. I post updates about videos and just taking live videos of me on the boat and fishing. So go check out my Instagram so you guys can see all those updates. Currently here in South Florida, we are experiencing quite the cold front and it's really turned off the fishing. And I've been trying for hours and hours and days, trying to get you guys a video, recording tons of footage of fishing. And I just, I can't get any fish right now. The, the fish are not liking the cold. The people aren't liking the cold. So I'm here today to show you guys a little bit about my inshore setup. So let's dive right into it. If you guys follow me on my Instagram account, you guys will see that I got a new Pen Battle 2. Uh, they're not new. They just came out the pen battle three, but there was a really good black Friday sale So I picked myself up one of these and it's a really nice reel. I have it matched with 20 pound cast king braid Let me grab that for you guys Don't have it Okay, so matched with this pen battle 2 4000 series I have, right? Yeah. So matched with this Pen Battle 2 4000 series, I have a Daiwa BG System 701 MH right here. This is a seven foot rod and its line capacity is, um, it takes 12 to 20 pound mono and braid up to 40 pounds. So this, this rod can really take a lot. It's got a pretty fast tip, which is really important when you're inshore fishing because it gives a little bit more sling in your line. So when you toss your lure out, it does a little like slingshot action and you know, you'll be able to cast further. I really like the seven foot rod as opposed to a shorter rod. I think seven foot's really the perfect length for me because it allows you to have a lot of control on where you're trying to direct your lure. Cause when you're in shore fishing, it's really important that you get your lure as close to the structure as you can because the fish like to hide just right on top of the pilings and they don't want to swim out a little further. So with this seven foot rod, it allows me to just sling my lure on and right to where I want it. So I'm going to go over some lures that I typically use when I'm fishing. All right, first we have this lure here. So you guys can see that. And this lure, I'm, I'm not sure what it's called to be honest, but I know it resembles a mullet, um, finger mullet particularly. It's about the size of your finger. And this is actually, this lure will slay. Um, it's got a little rattle to it. So, I mean, the snook go crazy for that. Uh, right now, I wouldn't be throwing that. Right now we're experiencing glass minnows in the shore where I am. So you don't want to use something like this because a glass minnow is only about this big. And this looks nothing like what they're looking to eat right now. So I wouldn't be throwing this finger mullet looking lure right now, but when it is the mullet run, which is around September, um, this would slay. Moving on, we have the classic spoon. Um, if you wanted to ask me what the most versatile lure that you could possibly get is, I would tell you to get a spoon. Um, jacks love it. I've caught snook on it. I've caught literally everything. You can catch barracuda, you can catch kingfish, you can catch Spanish mackerel, you can catch everything on this single lure right here, the spoon. Um, they come in different colors, different sizes and everything, and all fish just love it. I mean, it's an awesome thing. It's a must have inside your tackle box. You can use it all year round too. Next up on the list, not exactly what I was looking to show you guys, but it's just an example. This is just a regular bucktail. Um, I don't really prefer to throw these as opposed to the flare hawks. I'll try to put a picture on the screen. Um, flare hawks have a little bit of a tail that sticks down. They're a little bigger, a little puffier. And overall, I think they work a little bit better, but I don't have one with me right now. Those flare hawks, you're gonna wanna be throwing around bridges and you're gonna wanna let it sink down to the bottom and then pull it up and just give it a little motion so it's swimming. So let it down, jig it up, let it down, jig it up. And you get a nice little motion, it'll attract the snook and everything over to you. When using your flare hawk, you're gonna wanna cast it going with the current so that you're reeling in against the current. This is important so that your um, lure is presented in the best way possible and you maximize your opportunity to catch a fish. All right, moving on to the next lure. This is a DOA Terrorize. It's missing the eye and the hook. 
um, because I ran out of them. Uh, those lures absolutely slay. I've caught the most snook I've ever caught on these. Um, I absolutely love them. Uh, I don't have any left because I just lose them all because, I mean, they just catch so many fish, but I also catch the pilings with them. So I'll have to go out to the store and buy some more. But in the meantime, I absolutely love this lure. It doesn't look like it's much. It doesn't look like it's a have a lot, of, a lot of action, but I promise you, you will catch fish on a DOA Terrorize. Moving on to my last lure that I got just recently. This is a shad made by Storm and it's got a little paddle tail action going and it swims really nice. And I have not caught any fish on this yet. My dad actually has, I believe, I think he caught two snook on it. Um, I unfortunately have not. And this lure looks awesome. I can't say that it slays because I've never caught any fish on it but certainly looks good and it kind of resembles a glass minnow, which is what I was going for since you want to match the hatch and that's what's here right now. So this is the, the shad made by Storm. All right, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Um, leave a like if you guys enjoyed this kind of video. Tell me in the comments if you want to see more videos like this or not. Uh, once again, guys, if you aren't following my Instagram account, living underscore salty with two Y's. Make sure you guys go follow that. I post all my updates and everything. If I'm not gonna be posting a video, then I'll let you guys know. And speaking of posting videos, I'm planning on posting every single Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time throughout all of 2021. There'll probably be a week or two that I might miss. Uh, it's just due to, I, I'm a college student, so I got a lot of work to do and uh, sometimes the conditions aren't right to go fishing and jet skiing and some, I, sometimes I just can't make it happen. I don't want to throw out a bad video guys, video for you guys. So, um, so yeah, make sure you guys are subscribed. So you guys get notifications about every video that I post on Friday and make sure you stay tuned to see what my next adventure brings. All right. So guys, remember to keep living salty and I'll see you next time.